What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So before we get into the review, I just want to go over a few things. We are nearing that 200 subscriber mark, currently sitting at 198. Um, once we hit that mark, I will be giving away this 8x10 suicide autograph that I had gotten from shopimpact.com. Um, I just want to thank everybody that viewed the review from last week, nearing 700 views, which is fantastic. Thank you, everyone. And so this week's kind of going to be a combination show of news and the review of the, what was it, the 22nd? Um, but yeah, norm, next week we'll get back on track of doing the review on Thursday night and the impact report on either Saturday or Sunday. We got another nor'easter here in uh, New York, 19 inches of snow, kind of screwed things up, so... Let's get back on track, and let's get into wrestling. So, I thought Impact was pretty good this week. I um, actually watched it almost twice, just because uh, first time I wasn't really into it completely, so the second time around, I, I felt more comfortable with the episode. But we opened the show with uh, Alberto El Patron coming out and cutting a promo. Uh, normally, we see matches to open the show, so this is a little different, uh, a little, little fresh, um, I like this promo between the two of them. Uh, they, they just seem to have this tension whenever they're together, and uh, I think that's going to be helpful for building this feud. Um, but yeah, he comes out and uh, cuts a promo hyping the main event for Redemption, which will be April 22nd between himself and Austin Aries. Uh, he says that he is a fighter, and he doesn't want to come out here and talk for a while. He says that Austin Aries isn't the greatest man in the world, or the greatest man that ever lived, but he is. So Alberto goes to leave, Aries comes out, and uh, Aries comes comes out and says that, uh, you know, we both come from different worlds, but we very similar. Uh, he runs down a list of similarities between the two, but then he says, we are different, however, in that I speak the truth, and there is no one more real than Austin Aries. He says that Alberto is being disingenuous and full of BS. So uh, Aries was on the top turnbuckle and Alberto was in the ring and Alberto calls him to get face to face with him. And he says that Alberto says that Aries knows that he isn't the real champion until he beats Alberto. They go back and forth and Alberto says, enjoy that title while you still have it because it belongs to Alberto. And then Alberto left and they told him to play Aries music, and then Aries says, no, 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 play his music, because that'll be the last time you hear it leaving, since I'll beat you at Redemption. So, a good little promo here, and like I said, a little different to start the show. And then we go backstage to Sanjay and Josh Matthews, and Josh was talking about being the new grand champion, and he didn't currently have the belt with him, because he was getting the nameplates fixed with his name on it. Um, they hyped the match title match for redemption and go down the card for tonight and we find out that Seidel will face Rohit Raju and Matthews will be ringside and then return to the booth for the other matches so I'm, I'm hoping they kind of transition away from this I, I realize that Don Callis has come out and stated that the grand championship is just a prop right now um, I don't think that's completely going over with a lot of people which which it really doesn't matter but I mean, that, that's some of the backlash they're hearing, which is very minor, but it's something. So up next, we have Trevor Lee versus Fala Ba. Um, again, for some reason, the beginning portion of this match, they had to talk about Josh's title victories. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not even going to get into it again. But uh, Ba had the upper hand to start the match. Obviously, Caleb Conley was out there with Trevor Lee. He got involved, so Trevor Lee took control. Uh, Trevor Lee attempted a sunset flip, but Ba dropped straight down on Lee's chest. Uh, he got a two count on that. Uh, Lee tries to roll out of the ring. Oh, well, actually, no, he tried to crawl out of the ring. Caleb Conley started pulling him from the outside. Uh, ba grabbed Trevor Lee and pulled them both in the ring. Then he steamrolled both of them. Uh, ba hits a Samoan drop on Trevor Lee, but Trevor Lee is able to get his foot on the rope. Uh, ba sets up for the bonsai drop. Trevor Lee goes to kind of, I think, powerbomb him off, and obviously Ba was holding on. So Trevor Lee had the referee's uh, attention. Conley kicked uh, Ba or hit him, and then Trevor Lee slams him down and rolls him up for the pin. Um, 
I don't know what they're doing with Falaba here. He seems to be losing a lot, but I, I feel like they could give him maybe a little bit of a bigger role. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, not really more, much more to read into this match. Uh, then we go to outside of a hotel where Sammy Callahan is stalking a woman entering the hotel. Um, he follows her inside, and we get a bunch of different shots of him following her. And at this point, we notice that it's Alicia Edwards. She goes into a room, and then we cut back to the impact zone, and Mackenzie tells Eddie to take a look, and he looks at the screen and realizes it's her being followed. So Eddie leaves the arena to rush to the hotel. Um, and we go back to the hotel, and Sammy's walking up one of the behind one of the hotel staff, and he says that he's been locked outside of his room, and if she could let him back in. So, of course, she just walks over, and the end of the sequence here is we just see him opening the door, and we cut back to the impact zone. So, I mean, they're just building layers and layers in this feud. Um, I, I love the way this was shot. I, I, I enjoyed this segment. And uh, it, it's good that it's continued during the tapings. It's not like Eddie got hurt. We didn't see him at all again. And then they're just building it up on social media for them to pick it back up at Redemption or whenever their next set of tapings are. But like I said, they're, they're doing good stuff here. Uh, so we go backstage, and Mackenzie is interviewing Petey Williams, asking him what it would be like if he opened the briefcase containing the world title shot. And uh, he says that he won Feast or Fired once before and cashed in to win the X Division Championship. He doesn't care what's in the briefcase, even if it's the pink slip, because he'll put his job on the line just for a shot at a champion, or just a shot to be champion again. And then we have the Rohit Raju match versus Matt Seidel with Josh Matthews at ringside. Uh, apparently, Seidel has new music, which is very strange because it doesn't go... It, they kept the same video package, so it just doesn't flow well with it. Um, Fire Matthews chants came from the crowd, and the crowd just seemed to be preoccupied with Josh Matthews at ringside as he was interacting with them. Um, but, I mean, this was a decent match between the two of them. Uh, a lot of back and forth, each one getting their shots in here and there. Um, finally, the uh, crowd started to get into the match. We got a little bit of both these guys' chance. Uh, Seidel hits a sliding German. He goes up top for a shooting star press. Rohit uh, gets back up, go, tries for a superplex. Seidel knocks him or hits him and then hits a sunset, sunset flip powerbomb combo. Seidel then goes up top, hits the shooting star press three count and Matt Seidel is your winner so we go backstage and Mackenzie is interviewing Moose she interviews all four of the Feaster fired uh, briefcase holders throughout the night he says that he asked to be in the Feaster fired match because he's a risk taker he's only interested in giving or getting the world title shot because he didn't give a damn about the X division or the tag team titles and uh, he says he will be world champion in 2018 and then she interviews Eli Drake. And I always love Eli Drake and Mackenzie together. They're always great. Um, and he says that he's been fired from just about every company, every job he has had. Last time he was fired from company, he came here and became champion. He says that if, if he gets striked down, he will become stronger than you can imagine. He says that he is the Obi-Wan Kenobi of Impact Wrestling, while everyone else out there is just Obi-Wan jabronis. Oh, uh, Eli. And then we see a knockouts championship match between Allie defending against Sienna. Uh, this was a relatively short match, but only because there was more to the segment than just the match. I think it lasted like between four and five minutes. Uh, Sienna attacks Allie right out of the gate. Uh, Allie is able to go on the offensive after she moved out of the way from Sienna running toward her in the toward the turnbuckle. But a pretty even match back and forth. Uh, Sienna sets up Allie for the AK-47. Allie slips out, hits a super kick, and that was the match. So, of course, after the match, Braxton Sutter comes out. He says he's trying to reevaluate things in his life, trying to figure out what's important. He says the most important thing he thinks about before he goes to sleep is you, Laurel. I, I, I mean Allie. So Allie was not happy at this point. He tells her he still loves her. He proposes that they spend the rest of their life together. She shakes her head no, 
And then all of a sudden, she's attacked from behind by Sue Young. Uh, it was reported that she was going to be joining the company, and, well, here we have it. Um, the crowd really didn't have much a reaction, uh, but Sue Young comes in, hits the panic switch, and leaves. Uh, Braxton tell, says that was awesome, and then kind of follows her to the back. So uh, I, I was very glad that they brought Sue Young in. I think wrestling definitely needs more characters, like, like the Undead Bride. We have Rosemary, and uh, someone I didn't talk about, which he was on, I think it was the March Breakdown one night only, uh, Stone Rockwell. Uh, he actually wrestled uh, last week on Explosion against Rohit Raju. Um, definitely a person I would love to see in Impact Wrestling. Just the character development's fantastic. I I love the character. I mean, the guy's an adventure hero, and he's from Jones, Indiana. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, but yeah, no, I, we don't we don't see that that much anymore. Is like I said, characters. So I'm hoping that eventually. Sue Young. I, I don't know where they're going here. I would assume she would be feuding with Allie, considering that's who she came in and attacked. But I'd like to see her and maybe Rosemary do something in the future. Maybe Slammiversary, say. Then you flip the tables a little bit. Maybe have Ty ever go after the uh, Knockouts Championship. So, some things to think about. Um, I think this was the only time we're going to see Sienna on this set of tapings as she was dealing with, I believe, a blood clot. Um... So, yeah, I think she's still out of action. So we get an EC3 interview next, and uh, this is one of my favorite segments of the night. He says that this case holds his destiny in future. And at this point, Tyrus walks by and says, hope he gets fired. Then Moose walks by, says the same thing. Uh, Dick Justice comes by, says, I hope you get fired. Falaba, no, no, no. Uh, Ishimori comes by. Johnny Impact. And then Lashley, so everybody's hoping he gets fired. This was fantastic. I mean, just poking fun at the thing that everybody knew was coming. And then EC3 is like, I, I feel very confident. Says, I'm going to be a three-time world heavyweight champion. Um, and then we get the Global Wrestling Network flashback with Foley and Abyss in a Monster Ball match. At least it was relevant, considering that was going to be our main event tonight. So we go back to the hotel where Eddie Edwards is at. We see him running up the stairs and into the room. He finds Alicia sleeping. She says that she's fine. Eddie is looking everywhere in the room for Callahan. Uh, and then she's like, well, what's, what's going on? Eddie's like, all right, everything's fine. I'm going to leave. So Eddie exits the room, bumps into the hotel staff, who is pushing the cart in the aisle, or in the hallway, I should say. Um, so he, Eddie apologizes, and then the woman turns around and it was sammy callahan in a wig so they attack each other um alicia comes out and gets in between them and says she's ca called the cops and tells callahan to leave just more good stuff love what they're doing here then we get a video package of all the events that led up to the monster ball match between congo kong and abyss and that match is up next i, I really enjoyed this match um, they kept it pretty short, but it was it was good for what it was. Uh, the match starts off with both men just kind of beating the hell out of each other. Uh, Congo Kong got the upper hand and hits a few splashes. Abyss was able to pick up the garbage can. He hits uh, Kong over the head with it, sending Kong over the ropes to the outside. We uh, go to a commercial break, and we come back, and we find out that during the break, uh, Abyss had got thrown into a table... That was set up along the guardrail outside the ring. Um, so action goes back into the ring. Congo Kong goes for a splash, but Abyss throws him down into the ring. Abyss was on the ground at this point. Uh, Congo Kong was on the top rope. Um, Abyss then goes outside, grabs the thumbtacks, and sprinkles them in the ring. Uh, Jacobs gets up on the apron, and he grabs a kendo stick, hits Abyss in the back. Abyss's attention is now turned toward Jacobs, so he goes outside the ring, kind of chases him to, uh, as Father James Mitchell has Janice in his hand and pokes uh, Jacobs in the back, kind of letting him know he's there. So he's sandwiched between Abyss and Mitchell. Uh, Jacobs rolls into the ring. 
Uh, Abyss follows him, goes to choke slam Jacobs onto the thumbtacks, but Kongo Kong is able to uh, interrupt it. So he ends up slam choke slamming Abyss onto the thumbtacks. Uh, Kong sets up a table, puts Abyss on the table, goes up top for another splash, but Abyss is able to get up, power bombs Kong through the table, near fall. Um, Abyss then grabs the barbed wire board, sets it up in the middle of the ring. He grabs Janice to go after Kong. Kong reverses it, choke slams Abyss onto the barbed wire board, goes up top, hits the splash. One, two, three. Kongo Kong is your winner and the new monster of Impact Wrestling. So like I said, this was good for what it was. Um, curious to see where they go with this. I'd assume it's not over yet. And... To close the show out, we had the Feaster Fired Briefcase unveiling. So Eli Drake, they were going to go in the order of the number on the briefcase. Eli Drake goes first. He uh, opens his briefcase to reveal that he gets a future tag title shot. And uh, he, he's just like, I, I don't want this. I, I wanted a world title shot. I don't even have a partner. Then he grabs a briefcase and just leaves the ring. Uh, P.D. Williams is up next. He opens his briefcase. He gets an X Division title shot, which he was happy about. He leaves the ring. So we just have EC3 and Moose. Both uh, briefcases are put on the table in the ring. And uh, JB says they're going to simultaneously open them. So, yeah, this was all taped, obviously, before JB's departure from the company. I don't know if he's in any other future segments. Regardless, it really doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, both... They say they're going to open both cases up at the same time. Moose opens his case to reveal that he gets a future world title shot. And then everybody knows that EC3 is fired. So EC3... Uh, Moose leaves the ring. EC3 has, like... That's not my case. He says that there's no one on this planet that will make him open the case. So JB is like, well, I have to open the case. So JB opens the case, and he indeed got the case that says fired. So EC3 says he has done everything for Impact and has made them relevant. He does not get to be fired via briefcase. He says he is the top guy and the top 1% in the business. So EC3 chants th throughout the audience, and then he kind of gets serious for a minute and gives a little bit of a farewell speech. Um, I guess he has accepted his fate at this point. He goes to leave the ring picks up the briefcase, and nails JB with it, starts beating him as JB's on the ground with the briefcase. And then Brian Cage comes out for the save. So Brian Cage and uh, EC3 are face-to-face. -face. Cage hits the discus lariat and then hits him with the drill claw, put him away. Um, loved the way they ended this, just because it's everything that Callus has been talking about. People complain about who has left the company, but they don't realize who came in. And now this was the perfect transition because EC3 is leaving the company, but you have Brian Cage to fill that spot. Good stuff. Love the way they ended the show. Like I said, overall a good show. And it showed because this week's Impact drew 362,000 viewers and ranked 116 on Cable's Top 150, probably to do with the Feaster Fire briefcase unveiling, the Monster Ball match, um... I don't think they hyped much else besides that. Um, but yeah. We also learned this week that there will be there has been three more matches announced for WrestleCon with Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground. Uh, the main event is going to be Austin Aries and Phoenix versus Alberto El Patron and Pentagon Jr. Uh, big names, so makes sense for it to be the main event. Um, we have Allie defending her knockouts title against Taya Valkyrie, which is a little strange that they listed this match Allie versus Taya Valkyrie because I believe Taya goes under the name of just Taya in Lucha Underground. So I'm sure that'll change, but that should be interesting. And like I said, I hope these two uh, work together in Impact as well. Uh, Allie is definitely... Stepped up her game, so I think that will be good. And then we found out that LAX will be defending their tag titles against Killshot and The Mac. Um, good stuff. I uh, actually spoke with Brian Cage last night at the House of Hardcore show. He said that he's he will be at the show. Uh, he didn't tell me 
what side he will be wrestling on or the or who, who he will be facing. But uh, yeah, the main event, the show last night was uh, Brian Cage versus uh, Willie Mack versus Sammy Callahan, which uh, great match to end the show. Um, it was just a fun night overall. Uh, Impact Wrestling had also announced that they will return to the UK as a part of uh, Britain's biggest wrestling convention, uh, Wrestling MediaCon 2018. This will take place on Sunday, September 9th. And then we kind of have a preview for next week's Impact, which looks to be a big show because, uh, as we know, Austin Aries is looking for all the belts, and he is challenging Matt Seidel. And we will get Bobby Lashley versus Brian Cage. So those are two big matches. Um, I'm looking forward to next week's episode. Um, yeah, hopefully we can push those ratings up even higher. Uh, I think the highest rated episode for this year was 365,000. This week, 362,000. So it, it's it's definitely possible. Hopefully we can get up near that 400,000 mark toward redemption, maybe. But let's hope for the best. So thank you for taking your time out to check out my review. And if you like what you saw here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.